Congress is keeping the pressure on remote working government employees. This is the second hearing where federal agencies, they had to answer questions on the productivity of their remote workers. Earlier this year, agencies were given instructions to maximize the amount of in-person working. They were told to start transitioning from a post-pandemic environment where everyone's at home working and start bringing these people into the office. Now, I struggle with the term post-pandemic because we still hear about COVID. If you look at the news right now, you still hear and read about different variants. So is it truly a post-pandemic environment? That's what they're calling it. They called an end to the pandemic, so it's over. During the hearing, one of the chairmen said that he believed that agencies right now, federal agencies across the government, they're just phoning it in. And if you're not familiar with what that phrase means, that means given low effort, can't be bothered to show up. It's kind of an older phrase. He even mentioned that he believed that the agencies, they weren't being transparent with their data. And he even insinuated that they could be trying to hide some of their data. Different federal agencies had representation there and HHS for one rejected the idea that remote work or telework was hindering their productivity. They said that because they offer these type of flexibilities to their employees, it's one of the key reasons why they are so highly rated in the government. And it's true, if you look at the HHC rating, it was rated number two for large federal agencies. The Social Security Administration, they also came under the microscope. And the question that was asked is, why are you letting federal employees that are on probation continue to telework? Now, this Congresswoman didn't have an understanding of what the word probation means. Because outside of the federal government context, if you think about the word probation, you're thinking about people coming out of jail or people coming out of prison. Some, someone did something wrong and that is why they're on probation. In the federal government, that's not the case. Anybody who comes from the private sector and enters the government for the first time, they're on probation. And it's usually 12 months or 24 months in some situations, but it's not because they did anything wrong. In the past, federal government employees, they usually had to work 90 days, 120, maybe six months in order to build up some proficiency before they were allowed to telework some days. This is pre-pandemic. But now what we're seeing is there's more and more 100% remote work positions. So these individuals never step foot in an office and still they're trusted and they're trained in order to perform their duties. Then the Congresswoman pivoted and say, well, if that's the case, if productivity is fine in the SSA, then why is there such a growing backlog of claims? What's going on with that? SSA responded and said they had the systems to assign, to track, People are accessible. They're still doing the meetings. They're still able to address the priorities. Well, the Congresswoman came back and said, well, if that's the case, why did the backlog increase from 41,000 before the pandemic to 107,000 right now? That's a doubling. That's a more than doubling. The answer to that is SSA has been historically underfunded. And then add to that, 8 million new cases since the pandemic has arrived they don't have the proper staff. They've been understaffed for years. The SSA has over 15% less employees than 13 years ago. The SSA is actually at an all time low if you look back two decades ago. So less employees, but more claims. The claims keep growing like a hill that turns into a mountain. It's a simple math problem. If you fund it correctly, if you have enough employees, they're going to be able to address the backlog. And another defense that agencies took was, listen, we've had two almost government shutdowns. Every time the government's about to shut down, there are so many meetings that have to take place. And if you consider a one hour meeting across tens of thousands of people in an organization, you're wasting 60, 70,000 hours that could be spent maybe on the backlog, maybe on something more productive. But instead, you're worried about, hey, if the government shuts down, do we have a system in place? Who is the critical employee? What is the backup plan? That is what's being discussed. In the last hearing, other federal agencies, including NASA, the National Science Foundation, and Homeland Security, they were able to make operations more efficient by transitioning to remote work, which ultimately saved taxpayers money. And another consideration is when you do not have employees occupying these massive buildings in some larger metropolitan areas, these buildings could cost millions of dollars a year just to operate. 
that is a cost savings as well. Not just a cost savings to that agency, but really to the taxpayers. The way that thousands of federal employees are doing remote work across the country is very simple. It's very similar to what they do when they come into the office. There are still objectives that get completed. There are still meetings that happen. Largest part of your day, if you're an administrative worker for the federal government, it is attending meetings, but also email, following up, right? trying to figure out what's the best course of action, and then routing documents for signatures. All of these things are happening in a remote environment. What's not happening is probably the face-to-face -face interaction. All right, not counting Zoom with the video to teleconference, but the face-to-face -face interaction is missing. But when you find yourself in the office, there are other distractions that you have to contend with. There are times where I felt I've been a lot more productive at home as opposed to being in the office where, you know, there's people that swing by cubicles. There's people that just, they have rotations of cubicles. They come by and they're like, hey, do you want to get something to eat? Did you see the game yesterday? What did you do last weekend? Those type of conversations. It's kind of good. You can make an argument saying that's building the team. You know, you're increasing the, the level of collaboration throughout your team, perhaps. But it is something that pulls you away from what you're trying to do. You're trying to attain an objective. You're trying to get something to complete, trying to get a package done, and you're dealing with outside distractions. All right, if you're still looking for a federal government job, there's been some new rules when it comes to paying incentive pay to federal government employees. If you're interested in that, then I want you to watch this video next. If you would like to see more videos like this, please click like and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.